Welcome to KL Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. KLDMI is a non-profit ministry organization raising and impacting Christian leaders for community transformation through leadership trainings, believers conferences, and gospel crusades. Join our faith in action today for youth development through academic scholarships and grooming with our King of Kings College. Child development, which we do in partnership with Compassion International. Community transformation through radio programming and daily gospel of the kingdom broadcasts. Community outreach to the abject poor and disaster response. And the ongoing construction of a 10,000 seater multipurpose ministry complex. Partner with us today by following the contacts on your screen. Dear viewers, we are again blessed to have this wonderful opportunity to share with you about the greatness of our God. And the theme today is Take Up Your Cross. And uh, we're getting it delivered from the book of Matthew chapter 16, as from verse 24 through 27. I repeat, Matthew 20, uh, 16, verse 24 through 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. 25. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. 26. For what, what profit is it to a man if he gains his, the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? 27. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Uh, it, it's amazing. This is a wonderful thing in, into this world that many of us have to go to look up and understand what's going on today. It's like the time we're in, according to verse 24, Jesus said, and then said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, that simply means if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny self. Let him deny himself. Now, denying yourself is like letting it go in order to help others. Uh, 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 letting it go in order to get somebody to see the light. Uh, take care of the orphans. Take care of the widows. There are those people that seem to be a little disadvantaged. Take, take heart of them and help them. Don't think that the land is yours, the car is yours, the money is yours, uh, the house is yours, uh, the dog is yours, the cow is yours, uh, everything that is, is for you. Let me tell you something. If you want to make yourself be because of the things that are surrounding you, you will surely lose your life. I repeat the scripture. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, meaning if anyone desires to follow me, let him deny himself. Which means let, 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 let some things go and take up his cross. Taking up your cross is the, actually to take the crucifix and the fellowship with the Son of God who died on the road cross of Calvary. As much as we are talking about blessing, I bless you, God will bless you. Uh, uh, God has given me money. God has given me land. But have you ever considered the pain that Jesus went through on the red cross of Calvary? On Easter Friday, I've seen people carrying as tiny cross as small as a big pen. You know, <laughs> that, if the cross was that uh, little, then everybody would carry it. And at the end of the day, they, you, they end up in the bar in the evening. They even ask somebody else to carry the cross back home for them. Uh, take that cross for me. Uh, listen to this. It, it, it is great to remember the days of Christ on Friday evening. However, it, the, taking the cross is much more than that. It's a decision, and it's something that's not easy. Uh, it is easy to share with everybody about the blessing that Jesus can give. But when a time of trial and testing comes, many people see the devil other than seeing the glory of God. I want you to learn to see God in everything. In verse 25, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, will find it. This is a, a very strong teaching that Jesus gave to his disciples. If all you are looking is to make yourself be, 
you are looking for existence you are looking for a name today we have a lot of people that can call themselves names that at times you, you even can faint before the list of their names ends is called the prophet apostle uh, teacher bishop archbishop evangelical uh, dreamland and you know, oh, 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 yeah, their name and uh, you need a dictionary <laughs> yeah. listen to this why can't you just be called brother or sister and you stop there because the rest god knows <laughs> but but you are working hard to describe who you are there's some people today that are, are fighting for positions let me tell you something. In the kingdom of God, I don't care what position you give me. As long as you allow me to enter eternity, you've given me everything that I've ever worked for. So listen to this. For whoever desires to save his, his life will lose it. If all you're fighting, you're stepping up upon other people's heads because you just want to be something. Let me tell you something. You'll lose it. But whoever loses, if you humble yourself, let something go pass. Whoever loses his life for my sake, Will find it. Don't you know that giving your life Christ in this generation is like losing Christ because you're no longer into the bars, you're no longer into the disco halls, you're no longer into these, you know, big parties. There are people that take time getting ready for a party as if they are the ones getting wedded. And on the end of the day, you realize that the, the party is over, time is wasted. Learn to lose yourself in the Lord so that you may regain your life. Jesus says in Matthew, those of you that are tired and heavy laden, come to me and shall give you rest. And in Matthew chapter 35, uh, chapter 24 verse 35, it says, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain. Then in, in the book of John, the letter to the John, uh, jo, uh, letter, the letters of John, he says that everything that people are proud of into the world, the worldly, they have no benefit to the Father. Listen to this. It doesn't matter how well you put. It doesn't matter how much perfume you put on. Now, now understand me. I'm not against your perfume. I'm not against your nice clothes. But let, let them not be so important because they, they don't make any difference in your life other than making you lose everlasting life. In verse 26 is what he says. For whoever profit, for, for what profit is, is it to a man if he gains the whole world? <laughs> To gain the whole world. I, I, I don't know. I did not go to my strong confidence to find out what, what would it mean to gain the whole world. But to gain the whole world is to live ease with the world. You have the money. You have the gun. You have the bomb. You have the dollar. You have the pound. You have the position. You, you, everything. You, you don't care about the devil. It is a devil giving you. You don't care. You even worship him. You know, when, when, when the whole world is with you, even the devil Lucifer is your friend. You meet and talk because you don't care. All you're after is to make sure you have it. Let me tell you, you don't have it, you've lost it. For what profit if is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? The word S-O-U-L, soul, means life. What will it be to get that prestige, to get that position, to get that bomb, to get that man, to get that dollar to get that document to get that pound to get that euro to get that fame to get that position and you end up in destruction listen to this for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul now this is very 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 important people have dedicated their soul to the devil in or in, in, in return for riches you sacrifice your son, the daughter, your wife, your husband, just because you need money. Many will pass away, but the word of God will remain. Remember that God was, is, and will ever be. Now, you say, what will a man, listen to this, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Is there anything that if you're really sober, you're really into your mind that you can give in exchange for your life? Listen to this. If it means poor, I'd rather be poor than exchanging my eternal life for a meal. I think you remember the story about Esau and, uh, and Jacob. 
the whole story was about corruption. <laughs> Esau knew he was going to be the heir. But he did not care about the time then. He cared about the time now. <laughs> it's like, who, who knows who will die first than the other? You just give me a, a, a sip of beans and if you want the inheritance, take it. That's exactly what people are doing today. They don't care about what is happening tomorrow. They say, mm, who knows that the world will be there. Maybe it's going to pass away. The world will pass away. But you're not going to pass away. You're either going to hell or to heaven. Make a choice today. And some people say, uh, people preached about this even before you, Pastor Dixon. Look, I am not a god. And I did not leave when the world was created. Neither am I going to leave when the world is ending. But one thing I know, with God, all things are possible. Eh? Listen to this. Or, or what will a man give in exchange for his life? There's nothing I can give in exchange for my life. But you know, gentlemen that is listening to me, you've already worshipped the devil in exchange for your life. You've already done sacrifice because you want people to praise you in exchange for your life. You've already, you've already spoken something ugly to your creator because you can't worship the devil until you criticize and abuse your creator. You have already done that, the one who created you. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give in exchange for your soul? Many, men, women, witchcraft. What is it? And if you have done that, isn't that one a shame upon you? You did not buy this life. God brought you into this life. And this God that brought you into this life has a destiny for you. I want to tell you. You say you are hungry, but God is the one who gave you the abdomen that makes you hungry. So he knows how to feed you. You say you're poor, but how do you think you're poor when God gives you everlasting life? Is there anything that can be equated to everlasting life? So you, you, you are not even a billionaire, you're a trillionaire. Because you have what money cannot buy. In verse 27, verse 27, For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he will reward each according to his works. Now, some people are trying to work hard. Thank you for working hard. And you'll be rewarded according to grace. But listen to this. If you enter heaven, you enter it by believing Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, by believing him with your heart for righteousness and confessing him as your personal Lord and Savior. Now, that one gives you the permission to enter. But when now you are outside heaven, what will your works help you? So what I want to tell you today, do you want to be blessed by every work that you do? I want you to do one more important thing. Surrender your life to Christ. Remember that all the great men, including our great grandfathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joseph, you mentioned that the prophets, they are all have gone to stay with the Lord. But there are those that, uh, however great they were, they are with a rich man that would not fall into the bosom of Abraham. Let me tell you something. Jesus says, those of you that are tired and heavy laden, come to me, I shall give you rest. In Italy the other day, money was being thrown through the window. So money is not the answer. And you know, in Uganda, they have declared money of non-effective for more than twice in, in my time. They have changed currencies by where you find a lot of money thrown somewhere has no meaning because the currency has been changed. Listen to this. If change of currency makes your money devalued, what about the God of heaven who says your money is fake? Listen to this. Those of you that are tired and heavy laden, come to me. I shall give you rest. Don't be bothered by those people that are belittling you, but remain faithful to the Lord. And as long as you live, never worship the devil. Never worship the devil for money. Never worship the devil for a house. Never worship the devil for any gift that can be given to you. Any gift is given to you without a condition. Or once a condition is worshipping the devil, say, I would rather die poor. I would not worship the devil. And when you do that, people think you're stupid. But you, you, you better be stupid for the Lord than being wise for the devil. Because all the wise acres, one time will come when their, 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 their cunningness will not work. 
Because listen to this, Jesus says, those of you that are tired and heavy laden, come to me, I shall give you rest. Are you tired? Are you weak? Are you bothered? Come to me. Lose yourself in me. Because when you, when, the first time I told people that I'm born again, I was at school. And all my fellow students they said, you're also born again, is it possible? You're going to be a failure. You can't do anything. Oh, I've just realized it has not been easy. It's been a war because it is taking it by force. We are penetrating the kingdom of the devil. Grab him hold and say, no, none of us will worship you, but we will take it in Jesus' name. And look, we are prosperous. We are powerful, but we are worshiping God 24-7 because we are the children of God. I want to give you this opportunity that you can believe Jesus with your heart, even now, for righteousness. All your past, all your failures, all the little things that you've done, you may come out and take him as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus will forgive you, exchange the packages, take out your sins and give you free righteousness, and then you, you become the righteousness of God. Isn't it amazing, children of God, that I am the righteousness of God? You can judge me by your own fleshly measures, but I'm not measured fleshly, I'm measured spiritually. Uh, the worst sin is not actually how to commit the sins they committed. It was to live in a spirit of self-righteousness. By where they have belittled God in his own mercy to forgive that he can't forgive. God has the capacity to forgive and he can forgive everything and forgive everybody in Jesus' name. I want you to understand this today. There's a free gift of God that is roaming around your, your heart right now. God says, can you open up your door and I enter? I want you to believe with your heart. And say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart for righteousness. Forgive me. Deliver me. Save, set me free. Write my name into the book of the living. And I declare you shamelessly, wherever I, I am going, to declare and tell people I am a child of God, born again, and ashamed of nothing. I'm, I'm not ashamed of Christ anymore. Tell everybody. People will laugh at you, but the people that are laughing are laughing and you do, do not have any deal at all. Whatever deal they have is a dead deal. You have a sure deal. God bless you. Until next time, in Jesus' name.